Right, so Counter-Strike is one of the most popular game series on the whole planet, so it needs no introduction. But ever since it was made, it's always been a multiplayer-only game. In every single Counter-Strike, once you load it up, your only options are to look for multiplayer servers or create one yourself. Well, if you have at least one working brain cell, you'll notice that Condition Zero has this option, but that just lets you play normal games with bots again, so that's kind of lame. So, everyone knows Counter-Strike is a multiplayer game, and that's a good thing because the multiplayer aspect is what makes people keep coming back to play the game, even 22 years later. But while multiplayer is what the series is known for, the idea of a Counter-Strike game with a story to it definitely has to have crossed the minds of probably thousands of people. But I'm sure that a big portion of Counter-Strike players think that Counter-Strike has never had a story to it. Well, those people, you happen to be wrong. Counter-Strike does have a story to it called Condition Zero Deleted Scenes, and it's amazing. Deleted Scenes is its own game and is bundled with Condition Zero, which is also bundled with 1.6. So if you bought 1.6, you probably have it in your library without even noticing. It's an offshoot of Condition Zero, but with a story to it. It's probably important to mention that Condition Zero wasn't entirely made by Valve, even if Steam says it was. Everyone's only primary source, Google, says it was made by Turtle Rock Studios, Ritual Entertainment, Valve, and Rogue Entertainment, but they do not work on it all at the same time. I mean, the main menu of Condition Zero says Turtle Rock Studios, but the main menu of Deleted Scenes says Ritual Entertainment. So, okay, Turtle Rock made Condition Zero, and Ritual Entertainment made Deleted Scenes. But then who the hell is Rogue Entertainment? So the timeline of this game is... Condition Zero was first started by Rogue Entertainment, but after only a month, their CEO left, so Valve yoinked the game from them. So sucks for them, I guess. So then they gave it to Gearbox Software, but the project became so big, they started missing like 40 deadlines. So then Valve took the game from them as well. So sucks for them, I guess. Then Valve gave it to Ritual Entertainment, but Ritual Entertainment was making the game narrative-driven, which was very different from what Valve was expecting, so they took the game away from them. So sucks for them, I guess. So then Valve finally gave it to Turtle Rock Studios, and because the game was supposed to be released like three centuries ago, they made it really simple. They just changed the look of the 1.6 maps, and the single player portion was reduced to just points you earn to get bots. So what Turtle Rock Studios made is now Counter-Strike Condition Zero, but Valve also took what Ritual Entertainment made and released it as Counter-Strike Condition Zero Deleted Scenes. So Condition Zero was announced in 2001, but it finally released on March 23rd, 2004, which happened to be really stupid because that was right before Source was released, which looked so new that everyone flocked to that and practically forgot about Condition Zero. Sad. And so since Condition Zero itself was unpopular, you can bet that Deleted Scenes was even more unpopular, and so many people haven't even heard of it. But despite Deleted Scenes being not what Counter-Strike is about, which is 64 people crammed into one server, it's still well made with a lot of effort put into it. And while it might not even get close to being as popular as the other Counter-Strikes, there's still a small community. If you look at the community content on Steam, there's still stuff being posted on there, like stuff from in-game and some epic comedy for everyone to enjoy. So I did say that Deleted Scenes is basically a story mode, but that's not entirely correct. Hold on, hold on, let me explain. Deleted Scenes is split into a bunch of missions, but they aren't connected to each other in any way, at all, like not even one bit. So while each mission has its own story, there's no overall big story like in literally every other game. Regardless, it's still pretty cool I might say. So this being the only single player Counter-Strike, many aspects of it are very different from normal Counter-Strike. But because it's still Counter-Strike, some parts as you can imagine are still the same. You know how in Counter-Strike, you can only carry one primary weapon, one secondary weapon, a knife, and up to four grenades? Well, in Deleted Scenes, you can carry multiple primaries and secondaries. In one mission, you carry up to like six primaries. There's only one knife though, so no variation there. Although you do hold it differently than in Condition Zero. And grenades are the same, I believe. But besides being able to carry 20 guns like Gorn Freeman, a new thing that Deleted Scenes has is tools. The tools are mainly used to do important things. There's a blowtorch, which is used to break locks, and that's about it. There's a radio-controlled bomb used to blow stuff up, a camera to take pictures of important things, a radio so you can call your buddies to do stuff, and finally a fiber-optic camera so you can look around corners and through vents. The fiber-optic camera is especially weird because when you use it to look around a corner, your character model just disappears completely, and the fiber-optic part that I assume it has is also gone, making it look like it's just floating in midair. What's most important is that these tools cannot be used wherever you want. You can only use them in their corresponding zones. You can tell if you're in a zone because the tool's icon will appear at the top left, 
and the game just straight up tells you. I assume they have zones because of gold source limitations, but they're put in places where you need to use them, so it overall feels pretty seamless. Just like any Valve game, every place is split into maps, and let me tell you, the design of these maps are amazing. All of the maps in the game are super detailed. Like, look at this place, mate. I almost want to say they're more detailed than any source map. If you take the time to look around, you can see how good each place looks, and sometimes even find extra stuff. But they're not perfect as well. Sometimes I get lost because I don't know where to go. I should also mention the AI in this game. It's clearly different from traditional Counter-Strike AI. They're no longer running around the map trying to look for the other team with the most horrendous aim I've ever seen. If they're not aggressive, they now just stand in one place. When you're fighting them though, it's different. These bots are surprisingly good for 2004. Like, I don't know if it's because I'm expecting them to act a certain way, or if it's just because I suck. But there were a few sections I had trouble with because the bots would always get me, and I was playing on easy mode. They sometimes make it easy and stand in one place regardless if you shot them in the face or not. Or in the case of the pistol guys, just run away from you I guess. Other times though they run straight at you, especially if you go behind a wall or try to reload. And while that sounds kind of primitive, it somehow works and makes it a bit more difficult. It's kind of hit or miss because you can get a section where they're really difficult, but then later you realize that it's still gold source bots. You'll also notice that sometimes enemies make a cool appearance by sometimes doing a barrel roll only to die moments later, or running back when they see you, but in an animation that's smoother than normal because they're scripted. They also sometimes die in extravagant ways like getting pushed into boxes, or falling off a building and getting impaled on a gate. It happens at least once in every mission, but also quite often, so get used to it. Now let's go through the game together, shall we? So starting from the main menu, you can easily tell it's still condition zero. There's no option to find a server, because remember this is single player. There's a new game, which starts a new game just like Half-Life, but also world map. The world map is a map of the world, obviously. It shows the locations of all 19 missions in the game and lets you choose which one to play. It tells you which mission you're currently on and which ones are locked and unlocked. Clicking on an unlocked mission will give you some backstory and tell you what you're supposed to do. It also tells you the time, location, and organization, which are all irrelevant, but add to the story part. Overall, this map is cool. It does have one bug though. If you noticed, I'm showing you the map in a 4x3 resolution, because you're supposed to play this on one of these back in 2004. You can set the game to a 16x9 resolution, but if you do, the map won't scale at all, so you'll be left with a huge black rectangle on the side. The location dots won't adjust, which leaves them in straight up the wrong place. Like, three missions that are supposed to be on land are now in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Awesome. So you can select and play individual missions through the map, but starting a new game from the New Game button will play through the missions sequentially. So what I'll do is go through and give you a little tour of each mission in whatever order is provided when you start a new game. So first we have the training course, which shows as an actual mission on the map. The training part teaches you everything you need to know, which is its whole purpose. It plays oddly similar to the training course in Half-Life, definitely not a coincidence. It shows you the basic movement, weapons, and tools. Apparently pipes can be ladders, never seen that before. Your final training is to defuse a definitely real bomb. When you defuse, you can hear ruffles and clicking, while also seeing how incredibly slow this is compared to every other Counter-Strike. Like, they could have given us a defuse kit at least. Then the first actual mission is recoil. You start in a helicopter like in a lot of missions in this game. Then in literally 10 seconds, you get shot down, making the whole scene oddly similar to opposing force. You wake up and are instantly greeted by 50 people, some with machetes that run right at you. You run through a series of corridors and buildings until you meet up with one of your buddies. You make it to a helicopter, but oh no, your buddy got captured because he insisted on staying in a tower like an idiot. So you go back and find him and bring him back to the helicopter. Along the way, you develop a headache because this dude won't want to go down some stairs. No way, I'm not going any further. No way, I'm not going any further. Lost Cause is set in the Philippines. The first part is stealth. Yes, there's stealth in this game, although it's not extensive in any way at all. Throughout the game, when you're in a stealth part, sometimes this icon will appear, which basically means enemies cannot see you when you're in that zone. It also affects enemies' memory, I guess, because even if they clearly see you, if you quickly go to the zone, they forget that you even existed. Also, when sneaking around, you'll probably instinctively crouch to make less noise, even though it doesn't matter if you do because enemies can't process sound. Anyway, you sneak around to find some hostages, call in an assault, and then start clicking on some heads. There are trip mines that are a bit hard to see. There are also enemies with rocket launchers who will shoot the second they see you, leaving you no time to react to the rocket that's coming right at your face. This mission is a bit long, but it ends at a river. Secret War has you go to a nuclear missile silo to disarm them, 
but unsurprisingly, there's a group that's trying to steal it. But plot twist, there's another group that's trying to launch it. So it's a free-for-all between three groups. You put a bomb on a fuel line, and your friend sacrifices himself by staying behind like a true Russian. Finally, you're on the back of a truck, and you have to shoot down a helicopter. The end. Building Recon starts you at an office with the employees playing the game you're currently playing. Your boss, I assume, tells you what you're going to do with some impressive paper physics for Gold Source. You start with another stealth section, trying to avoid terrorists that make stand-up comedy type jokes. We could always throw icicles at an intruder. <laughs> you find the bomb that they have, take a picture, and you instantly get greeted with enemies. One of your friends say the nuke is missing despite clearly being in a box. So you make it outside and fight through a whole army on your own like any other single player protagonist, and on the way blow up a tank. You make it to a church where they planted another nuke they had, and the guy who planted it has 10 times the health of any other enemy. You defuse it, and despite not being in training anymore, you somehow defuse it just as slow as the guy that was training. Drug Lab is in Colombia on a rainy night. You start by going through a minefield that is definitely dangerous as demonstrated by your friend. You go through the most unsanitary buildings I've seen, and in the meantime blow up some equipment, and finally save some hostages they had. Motorcade Assault starts with you blowing up some trucks that are supposed to protect a famous terrorist leader. Throughout, you just chase him while shooting his group that are somehow spread out across the whole town, even in the sewers. The last place you see him is behind some bulletproof glass in a quite nice looking place, might I say. He doesn't run anymore for some reason. However, he did not notice the giant hole in the window that you throw a grenade in, so, I don't know how he became leader with a head that small. Thin Ice is on a ship that's headed to collide with the city. You start in one of the rooms with no exposition on how you got there. Probably G-Man. It's also infested with cockroaches. You simply go through the boat and shoot everyone you see. You turn a simple valve that sets the boat off course. And finally, you go up to the top and fight a literal jet that was on the boat. The jet doesn't fly as fast as a jet should. Instead, it flies like a helicopter would, but whatever. This is the only mission in the game where you can use an AWP. And I guess the jet is made of cardboard or something, because a few shots from the AWP is enough to destroy it. Downed Pilot has you investigate the crash site of a helicopter that just crashed, but as you can probably expect, he was taken by terrorists, who have other hostages again. So you go through looking for them, and end up getting taken yourself because they gassed you. The terrorists, as usual, are stupid and forgot that they left a knife in the wall, so you escape and continue your job. And that's it. Hankagai is the first of the four levels that take place in Japan. This game has a lot of missions that are strictly in Japan, more than any other region on the map for some reason. Well, in this one, a politician is going around town making a public appearance when he shouldn't be. You can see him show up, and in less than a minute, someone shows up to kill him. So you have to protect him, and if he dies, you fail. But then, since the leader failed to kill him, he instead takes some random girl instead. The rest of the mission is you chasing after him. At the end, even though he says, I'll kill her, get away from me, he doesn't do that and instead just tries to shoot you. The girl though, despite almost getting hit because she won't move her head out of the way, isn't as shocked as you think someone would be. They're just built different. Turn of the Crank makes you go undercover to meet with another drug lord who looks incredibly stereotypical. Then your boys assault the place as usual. The thing is, you're only provided with a pistol and that's it. And I don't know if I missed a weapon that I was supposed to get, but they throw a lot of enemies when you have literally nothing. You do get a machine gun though, which is one of the best weapons in the game, so after that it becomes easy. It ends with you going against the man himself, who has 5 times the health as everyone else despite not having any armor on. The mission is also short, it's only like 9 minutes long. Alamo does not take place in San Antonio, Texas, it's in Yipiti. Another terrorist group has attacked a US embassy there. You have to go find hostages at... King Kebab. Wonderful. So you go through and find them. You know how it is. Finally, you help a helicopter land while also taking a rocket to the face as usual. Rice Hard starts in a briefing room again. This time, a terrorist group has taken a high-rise office complex. Oh, and they have a nuke as well, you know. The bad news though is that they're gonna set it off in exactly two hours. But even though everyone heard that, no one is rushing. So they either don't care, like at all, or are in complete shock from the situation that they can't even move. <laughs> What the fuck? So you make it to the tower and are immediately greeted with a hail of bullets. You just barely make it inside and now you go through the most confusing labyrinth of office desks I've ever seen. You go take out whatever the guy on the radio says, while also going around some elevators that don't work, 
and evading a helicopter that they apparently have. You go to the top of the building to meet the leader, who has a few loose screws, I think. You keep going through one of the hardest parts of the game, at least for me. What? You get captured by the guy, and he wants to have a knife fight with you. You stab him, but he runs away again. You finally defeat him by blowing up a pillar supporting the room he's standing in, making him fall down what looks to be like 60 floors, even though you only went up 40 floors. And the credits roll. I want to mention these credits because they're amazing. They of course show everyone that worked on the game, but also show some extra artwork, and some random set pieces like someone falling and breaking into a bunch of pieces, or a woman that gets assembled and then her head explodes. Truly a masterpiece. And that's it. That's the end of the game. Hold on, wait a minute. That was only 13 missions, even though there's supposed to be 19. Apparently starting a game doesn't play through all the missions, so the rest you'll have to play through the world map. So I'll go through the rest in no particular order. In Miami Heat, a bunch of robbers rob a bank and take everyone in hostage. So you go through the sewers instead and come up through the floor. A majority of this mission is stealth because you have to rescue the hostages while not being spotted by this one guard who just walks back and forth for the rest of eternity. Once you're done with that, you order an assault again through the front door and you win. GG. Sandstorm has you go to a chemical facility that's doing something sus. You shoot everyone you see with no remorse. Throughout the game, but especially this mission, they love to put enemies behind corners so they surprise you, even though it gets annoying after some time. But once you kill everyone, you're done. In Pipe Dream, rebels have taken over an oil pipeline for whatever reason, and of course taken the workers hostage. And your job is simple, kill everyone and save the workers. So you do exactly that for 10 minutes straight while also seeing cool fake physics. Now these last three missions are all in Japan. Again, I don't know why there's so many. In Fast Line, you're just chilling on a subway with students that don't bring anything with them, and with people who don't watch YouTube all day. Until suddenly you get flashed and all you hear is screaming, which is probably the most realist thing ever in this game. You wake up and immediately get to shoot a guy that's setting up a bomb, but you can't defuse it because it blows up in 5 seconds. One of the guys says there were a bunch of survivors thanks to you even though the bomb still went off. You're given a pistol and a shield. Yes, this is the only part in the game where you get a shield. However, the shield is kind of useless because you're going to get hit regardless when you go to shoot. You continue to just go through the station until you meet with the leader again who has taken two girls now. This is the second Japan mission where this happens. You kill him though and he falls in water. Good job. Truth and Chaos is about a cult that wants to release nerve gas in public, which I believe is an actual event that happened in Japan. Oh, too soon? You first start in some dojo looking place, and the first thing you'll notice is this guy practicing some moves, so you won't even pay attention to the guy that's telling you your job. Irrelevant. You go to the cult's house that they stay in and try to find all the places where they keep this gas, and of course in the meantime save some hostages. Just don't touch the lasers because you'll get gassed. The last mission is called Run, with an exclamation mark for emphasis. In the beginning, you assassinate a gang leader, and all you have to do is run to the truck at the end to escape. What's interesting is that this level has a time limit. I haven't seen what happens if you run out of time though, you probably just fail, but you're given plenty of time, so if you run out, you really suck. Since this is a chase mission, sometimes the game will spawn enemies behind you to give the impression that you're being chased, which is pretty cool. And that's it. That's every mission in the game. I honestly like all the missions. Sometimes they do have the same basic story, which is just, Terrorists have taken this place, so let's take it back. But even for those, the different environments they're in really make it unique and not so repetitive. Overall though, Deleted Scenes is a great game. It is kind of sad to see it being forgotten by a majority of Counter-Strike players though, because it had a lot of potential. I highly recommend you try it out if you haven't, because it's really good. Like I said, if you have 1.6, you likely have it in your library without noticing. So try it out. It's worth it. But anyways, bye.